Hey guys. So today you and I are going to talk about dependency injections and work experiences. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I am learning am I learning too slow if I just recently uh, am I learning too slow that I know that when I say that I know dependency injection decoupling weak soft reference soft references and code coverage only after two years of work experience okay I'm just I'm just gonna paraphrase so paraphrase a little bit here uh, so the question that you are asking me as I understand it is if you know about to say something like dependency injection after two years of work experience, have you been learning too slowly? Well, I would say that it depends a little bit, but in general, no. I wouldn't say that that is necessarily something where you learn too slowly. Because unfortunately, this kind of comes down to the way, like you, as I like to call it, your, your entry into IT and the learning path that you have set for yourself. These are the two factors that are going to determine if you know this stuff or not. Uh, I made a while back a video about domain-driven design and I pointed out in that video that the, the idea of domain-driven design is not something that is obvious to everybody in, in IT because the concept and the literature that is associated with the concept is almost a, a Bible-like text in, say, the Java community or in the C# -sharp community. In certain communities, this is part of the it's one of the core texts for that community. But due to the diversity in IT and software development, that's not a given. There are concepts in other languages and other communities that are like core to that community, but it's really not taking any foothold any somewhere else. Uh, just as you have different values and different types of um, government in different countries, it's the same thing. Like each country values things differently, so things work a little bit differently. So, something like dependency injection. Well, the fact that you, if you I mean if you've been working in, I don't know, say, uh, say PHP, as an example, just very simple PHP development for two years. Why in the world would you necessarily know about dependency injection? It's not. There's, it's not really going to be something that you might be exposed to. But on the other hand, let's say that you were working in Java or something like that, and you use annotations or something like that, or Java Beans, etc., etc. Well, that's dependency injection. That's like uh, Java has a lot of history with dependency injection, so it would be something that you would be kind of faced with. If you were in the front end space, well, you might not, well, you may uh, not make the connection between like the, the academic definition of what dependency injection is all about. If you go to Wikipedia and you learn about dependency injection, you might not make the connection that, well, dependency injection is kind of the props thing in React, and Angular actually does have real dependency injection. And I mean, so the, like there are things there. You, you might not know about the concept in the way, like if you talk to somebody else about it, you may not even understand that this is the thing that you're doing. It's a that's also a video that, that I made a while back when I was trying to explain that the reason why nobody uses monads is because nobody sees the value in them. And I was very, of course, which I very much expected, uh, told that well, Frederick, <laughs> we use promises in JavaScript. Don't you know that that's a monad? And I go, yes, but if I ask a JavaScript developer what their favorite functor is pretty sure they're not going to tell me the, uh, that the, the array is their favorite one because they don't like using something consuming something and knowing what it actually is is very different uh, so what I want you to take away from this is that I know I don't think that it is weird for you to not know about decoupling or dependency injection or soft references and so forth at the two years of work experience because after two years of work experience you are at the very best, a mid-level developer, someone who can work independently. Uh, it's very rare that uh, you're going to be considered a senior software developer or anything like that. And the reason why you may not know about dependency injection, for example, may it may not be because you, I, I mean, think about it. If you start in a language that where dependency injection isn't really a thing, and all the tools that you're using, it's not really a thing, it's not something that 
is on your radar, well, then you're not going to know about it. That's why we all know different stuff, right? That's why you can go to a dinner party and not just talk to yourself. Or well, have a very one-sided conversation, because if everybody had the same experiences, hey. Uh, so that's one thing to it. And the second thing is that you may not actually work outside of that little box or the, the thing that you were, you've were you been uh, working with. Uh, you may not be exposed to the term dependency injection because maybe you're only on one language in, that doesn't really use it and therefore you have no knowledge of it because you don't use other programming languages. This is something that comes down to your own learning strategy. If you go very specifically into one thing or you're very, I mean you've stepped to two years so I can't imagine that you've had much time to learn all the things. Uh, you're si you sim simply haven't seen all the other communities and what the other languages are doing and so this specific thing is not really on your radar yet. doesn't mean that you can't learn it but I don't think that you should feel bad about the fact that you haven't learned it fast enough because there's a ton of stuff that a senior software developer would know but then there are a ton of stuff that they might not know. I remember once a time when I, came, I was asked by a senior software developer of 20 years to come and help him debug some React code because he never worked with it. And there was no, there, that's the thing. So you work with some stuff and some stuff you don't work with. And when you learn, when you were, start working with that stuff, you're also going to know all about it. That's how it works. Have a great day.